three. Good morning. Once again, it's Wednesday, 10 o'clock, a time when we stop and reflect on who we are and who our God is and how he guides us each day in the work that we do here at the hospital. Let's pray. Lord, bless our time together now and bless the words that you have for us to hear. Open us up to your spirit. Nancy is with us today, and so, Nancy, if you would, thank you. Yes, okay. Yes, I'm Nancy Castaneda, and I'm just uh, bringing a, just a short devotional today. And it's been kind of a, a wild last couple of days. It's been hard, because I just recently lost my aunt the day before yesterday. She passed on to her eternal reward with the Lord. And that particular morning, I had a, another actually prayer meeting I was going to be leading at seven o'clock on Zoom. I don't know if you're familiar with Zoom, but it's with different women, my particular group with women across the nation, actually. It's a small group, but most of the ladies are back east. And I was talking to my cousin who was at my aunt's bedside, and I was praying a prayer with her as my aunt was taking her last breaths. And then I had immediately to go to this prayer meeting where I was one of the facilitators. And I'm telling you that the grace of God just swept in under me and undergirded me. And it was a beautiful thing because as I shared, some of the other ladies on the call were able to pray for me. And I saw God's graciousness his loving kindness, his compassion. It was very real to me that morning. And then later on in the day, I had a young lady contact me who wanted to know more about Jesus. And in my grief, I couldn't, I just felt like I couldn't put her off. She wanted to know about my savior, Jesus Christ. And so I spent time with her and then, um, I had a dear friend contact me within an hour, probably two hours, and she was devastated. She has four grown sons, devastated by something that one of her sons said to her. And yet another son happened to contact her and share with her the word of God, who she would never expect that son to be talking about things of God. And again, I saw the goodness and compassion of God upholding my dear sister and the Lord through one of the darkest times in her life. And then yesterday, I drove with my two daughters down to LA because one of them has a follow-up appointment for a diagnosis that she received a couple years ago. Well, that has been spoken over her and she continues to believe God. She's taking the treatment as prescribed. And yesterday, the doctor said that there's been such an improvement and they couldn't even see some of the lesions that had been there on that previous MRI. And so it's been like a roller coaster couple days. But at the same time, I can tell you that God never fails. The most, I guess the greatest thing you can do is continue to praise God, that that opens such doors of grace to you when you continue to thank God and praise him for the things that are happening around you. And you know, this morning when I turned on my computer, what first comes up? These awful things that are happening in our states and around the world, and I'm just thinking, I just called out to God. God, you know all these things. And yet I praise you because your love is so evident. And you love every single person that's walking through these difficult things. And you are the answer. So the word says, this is in 1 Thessalonians it's chapter 5. It says to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, 
And that's what I try to do, is to bring these situations before God, always with a heart of thanksgiving. It says in everything, doesn't say for everything, but it says in everything, even when you're walking through these things, to give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. And I know that if you stopped for a moment and closed your eyes, you could think of things where you are so grateful to God, where he never lets you down, or even today, things that he's working through. And so I invite you, I invite you to bring those things before him, to seek his face, seek his will, to surrender, because that's what we do. When things are weighing heavy on me, I just come before the Lord and I say, God, this is everything that's happening. I don't know what to do, but I know you do, and you have an answer. And I can trust because your word says that you are my strength. Your word says that you work all things even when those things seem awful and evil, it says that you work all things together for good, for my good, as I trust in you, because I'm called according to your purposes. So what do we do? We continue to stay focused on him. We, I, when I talk to my grandson and I have to discipline him for something, I get down on his level, get down on my knee, and I look at him eye to eye and I go, Samson, look at grandma eye to eye. And I tell him what's needed in love. But that's what we need to do. We need to look at God eye to eye. We need to lock onto him in anything that comes our way because he truly is the answer. In him, we find fullness. In him, we find compassion and care and comfort that the world cannot give. You know, we have our families, we have our dear friends, but not a one of them that can, can fulfill us. Just as I heard this morning of a dear friend who has lost a precious one in her life, and yet I see how God has brought her through. I see how God has continued to undergird her and will continue to undergird her as she said herself that she's on the other side now. It doesn't mean that hard times come. It doesn't mean that sweet memories come that don't bring tears to our eyes. But at the same time, we can know that there is peace beyond anything that the world can give us. There is peace that is true and everlasting. So let me pray for you right now, okay? And I'm going to read a scripture too. I'm going to incorporate it in my prayer for you because he's the answer. Truly he is. So Father, I thank you for each one that's listening, each one that maybe even be watching at this moment. And I ask you to bless them. I ask you to show yourself strong on their behalf. You are a faithful God. And so I pray that, Lord, for each person, whether they're watch, watching live or if they're watching on a replay. I pray that the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace, believing, knowing that you will abound in hope by the power of his spirit. I thank you, God, that even when there's a table, when even in the presence of my enemies, sometimes it feels like that, that you prepare a table before me and you anoint my head with your healing oil and my cup runs over. So Lord, I pray that for each one, that their cup runs over with love from you and they know it in their very core, that you are looking out, your hand is upon them, and your presence is with them as they call on you, because you are with us always. In your name, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ,